need to. Doc, Doc's a motorcycle service. Rawr, 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 rawr. Welcome back to the garage. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this wheel into this wheel. What we're going to be doing is relacing a wheel. You got your tire, you got your rim, you got your spokes, and then you got your hub. <clears throat> and what brought me down this road was this. Looking for a front wheel, a front rim for the front of Donna, like the owner wanted. Thick spoke, twisted thick spoke, what have you, was going to be anywhere between $700 and $1,000. Now you know I do not like to spend money. Mm, Linda might argue about that. But, if I can save a dollar, I'm going to save a dollar. So I started investigating <clears throat> the wheels. We determined that the rims were 16 by 300. And what that basically means is that front to back, it's a 16 inch rim, the outside part. The 300 classifies its width, which makes it take a 3 inch wide tire. So I was like... <sighs> The rims are good, they're chrome, they're in great shape. They're not bent, they're not cracked, there's nothing wrong with them. Why does this guy need to spend $600 to $1,000 to give the bike a different look? And he said, so see what you can find out. Now I dug into this because these are the original rims on Hot Donna. They were made in Italy for Harley Davidson. And it took some digging to find them, but I finally found uh, the spokes and got them ordered. So now what we're going to do is go through the process of taking this front wheel off the bike. Now I'm not going to show you how to do that. I've already covered that before. Uh, I'll put a little link right here to a video that will show you how to take the front wheel off of this year, this style, this model Heritage Softail. You can click on that link, go watch that, then come back here. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this front wheel off and then we're going to take it to a guy that I trust to take the uh, wheel off of the rim. Yes, I could do it and yes, you can do it and probably some of you have done it. But at this point in the game, I don't want to risk messing these rims up because I don't have the spoons that you need to take the rubber off of the rim and I don't want to buy them. I want to try to keep this low cost. You know our motto here, save money, do stuff yourself. So we're going to snatch this thing off. We're going to get it to a guy, let him take the rubber off of it, get it back to us, and then we're going to put it on the table and I'm going to show you how to relace a rim. Don't forget to check out the Facebook page. I'm getting some activity over there. Okay, so got the uh, front wheel off of the bike. And I think you can see here uh, how these spokes, whatever they're made out of, they're probably not aluminum. They're probably something. But over the years, um, have just discolored and you can really see the nipples here uh, along the edges along the edges where they pull through the rims so we got it off the bike now we're going to get it to the tire guy and let him get the rubber off the rim we got the wheel back and i or the rim back and i'm going to show you that in a minute but i want to tell you something serious very important are you listening what we're doing here today is inherently dangerous okay on a difficulty level you have easy mild moderate and very this is this is fairly a mild difficulty mechanically to do but on a safety level it's inherently dangerous it's it's off the charts it's up here and i'm going to tell you why because what you have to be careful to do is to make sure that the hub, again, is not only centered in the rim this way, but this way. And if you do not get it centered in there properly, 
then what's going to happen is um, you will get a vibration going down the road. Uh, the alignment will not be right. Uh, and unless you are in tune with your motorcycle, you're not going to feel it until it's too late. I'm just telling you. I will, at the end of this project, take this rim to a guy that I trust, have him put it on his tuning stand, and I'll try to put a picture of that up here, and get it to where it absolutely perfectly needs to be at. And I would suggest that you do the same. This is not the same as replacing the outer rim on a dirt bike. A dirt bike is going to go 35, 45 miles an hour. It has one set of spokes in it. This thing's got 40 spokes in it. It has to be done the right way. If it's not done the right way, uh, <laughs> you can hurt yourself. You can hurt somebody else. It's, it's that serious and I want you to understand that before you you start this because as I've said before I am not responsible for you all right so with that said where's Linda oh there she is Here I am. there's the Linda everybody say hey to the Linda hi everybody so Linda we've talked about this and going into this project what are your thoughts on some things to do to make sure that you're doing this the right way one of the key things I think helps is that you use that valve stem hole as your indicator um, for inside what? outside and then you go from there doing your spokes making sure that you've got them going in the right direction um, that's key you're gonna know it whether or not they are because they won't lie flat but they will go in improperly they will but they also won't look right. They just yeah. won't look uniform. And it won't line up right. Uh, they can go in, and we'll show you what we're talking about. The head of the spoke, uh, it's almost like a nail. And the spoke comes down, turns, and goes out at an angle. And you'll, I'll show this to you in the hub when we get these things out, that that head has to seat in. It will seat in in the wrong direction. Yes. But it will seat properly in the correct direction. All right, so Linda's got stuff to do. Work. All right, I guess she went and did it. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the rim. One of the important things I want you to understand is this has a rubber um, strip in here. And what the rubber strip does is um, these nipples will not draw down so tight that they will become airtight. So on a spoked rim like this, you will always have a rubber trim laid in here to prevent air from escaping and your tire going down. So the first thing we got to do is move this out of the way. So all we're going to do, and you know me, I love my pick, is we're just going to come in here and we're going to get this thing pulled up. And you can see it's old and nasty. So we'll just end up ripping it. Or we'll end up taking a pair of shop shears and cutting it and then taking that off. Made in Italy. These rims uh, are 36 years old, 34 years old, and they've held up good. I mean, you can see that the rim is good. So that just reinforces my theory to replace uh, these spokes. Now, we've already replaced the wheel bearings. There's another video on that, so we're not going to deal into that. I'll put a link up here. Um, what we'll do is take a screwdriver and try to screw these off. Mm. Mm. I was afraid of that. So when you're working with something that's old and as rusted as this is, uh, these nipples are probably not going to unscrew. Um, and it's important that you use your service manual. Tech tip. Tech tip. Always have your service manual uh, before you do anything because the manual also shows you a way to tune these. They should be checked on your bike often and if you are checking them on your bike often they will probably be loose but as I feared 34 year old bike these have rusted and we're gonna have to cut them out. Tech tip. Safety glasses. Uh, you'll see why here in just a minute. Um, or actually say yeah safety tip because 
I have a feeling that when we start to snap these out of here with a pair of bolt cutters, they're going to go flying, and you do not want them to fly in your eye. All right, let's get at it. We have taken lots of pictures. This is a tech tip as well. From different angles of this, using this as a marker to look at the way these are flowing. You'll notice that there's um, 20 on this side and 20 on the other side. And you'll see how this one goes forward laying over these, but that slightly offset in here comes back this way. And that'll be more clear once we get into it. So you can see what kind of pressure that was under. So as we cut them out, you can let it drop out that way and you can take this one and turn and pull it out. All right, Linda's gonna step over here and rotate this thing for me. I wouldn't try to cut them too close up here because you might damage the hub and I wouldn't try to cut them too close down here because you don't want to try to cut through the nipple. Now the process is just to wiggle them out. Now these might give us a little trouble. Take them out just like that. And again these, you just bring them up, turn them. You can, you can feel how it comes out and then slide them out. So what we're going to do now is get the other side and we'll be right back. Now this might be a good time to show you a little secret here. As I told you the ones on the bottom lay this way. When you go to feed yours back, you'll notice if I take this and I run it out, uh, if I bring it out and turn it and come this way, it wants to jam into that. This will be a tech tip. You're going to have to fight it to get it out. You shouldn't have to fight it to get it out or in. If it doesn't want to come out on this side, you work it back in. See how easy it came out on that side? And the same thing is true when we go to relace them. You should not have to fight these to get them in. To keep anything from jamming up, take you a couple of two befores or four befores. Pick that up. Set them in here, long ways, that will support your hub. It's not going to be as bad now taking them out as it will be when we start to relace them. So we're going to flop this over, we're going to clear these out of the way, when we get rid of the trash, we're going to clean this up, then we're going to come back and get started on lacing it. Now I will tell you this, you want to try, this is a tech tip, you want to try to prevent any contaminants from getting in here. So my suggestion would be if you're going to wash this, wash it by hand, but don't dip it in water, put something over this. You could probably clean this with alcohol um, and then put um, some tape over it uh, if you're going to hand wash it to degrease it, but you don't want anything getting in there because if you do, then you've got to clean that hole out, dry it out, and then repack it with grease. I tell you what, looks pretty good. I mean, really, I don't know how well you can see that, but it cleaned up like a champ really happy with it <laughs> look at that so you're naturally saying well what you need to clean it up with simple i use some engine cleaner some foaming engine cleaner and a worn out toothbrush basically what i did was hold it from the top side and spray it downward clean everything on this side and the outside and in here and then dried it flipped it over held it by this side sprayed it down 
everything ran down and dripped off nothing went inside and then I just touched up the edges now there's a little bit of surface rust on here um, and you might call this a tech tip um, you can see there's just a little bit of surface surface rust right there I mean I can't even feel all, the only part of it that I can feel is just a difference in the texture so I'm not going to worry about it however if I could feel a difference in the change, if it had a high spot on it, I would probably take a little emery cloth and clean that up because you want your brake rotor, and this is the brake rotor side, to sit on there as flush as possible so it spins as straight as possible. There's a little lip in there, and you want to go in and get all that garbage out of there. Plus, on the inside, where the uh, head of the uh, spoke sits uh, there's a small lip in there a small indentation by going in there with a toothbrush you're going to get any 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 garbo out of there anything that's accumulated over the last 34 36 years and allow the head of that spoke to seat in there properly satisfied with the way that turned out uh, we're going to use the rear swing arm uh -huh, uh -huh, tech tip to use as our truing stand real quick before I forget when you're working on old tires also come through here and check these nipple holes um, you want to make sure they're clean so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a wire brush and go over this to make sure all the gobbly glukes out of there too uh, yeah gobbly gluk is a real word look it up we got our hub nice and cleaned up and we've got it fairly centered in the ring here or in the rim here and what I want to show you is this um, and let you be able to see it pretty good so this is the top of the hub that you were just looking at with it standing up you'll notice that you have outer rings for both sides and you have inner rings for both sides and so you're gonna have 20 over here and 20 over here and as we pointed out in the earlier picture, and I'll put up here so you can see, our visual reference for the inner on this side was turned back this way. And the outer go in and lay this way. Knowing that the outer ones, these up here closest to this edge, are going to lay over these, we're gonna put these in first. These are the spokes we're gonna go back with and had to look high and low for these because a 16 by 300 rim is not very popular anymore this is the head that i spoke of i mean it looks almost like a nail and then this is your nipple the bottom end of the spoke is threaded this will slide through the rim this nipple will come through the inside of the rim and then slide up and screw on now tech tip the inside of this like the first eighth of an inch of this is not threaded you'll notice when I put it on here it slides up before you actually hit the threads now I'm gonna tell you something I'm gonna be real serious about this remember what I told you about putting these things on and backing them out till they click hear that hear that click that tells you that the threads are lined up when you go to do this, turn it backwards till it clicks and then start to put this on because they don't give you any extras and you don't want to screw them up. When you go to put these things in, they're only going to go in one way and they're going to go in easy and you bring them up and you lay them down. Now with your first one, uh, with it sort of centered, you're sort of going to get an idea of where this thing's going to touch the rim in this case if you can see that one sort of lines up with this hole right here Linda can they see that with this head laid in there nice and neat it sort of points at this hole right here and as you can see let me see another one just for giggles the angle of this hole is the same way as we're going to take this and a nipple and we're going to stick it in here so it bottoms out 
and we're just going to give it a couple little turns to get it started. Not a whole lot, just a few. There we go. Now what you want to do at this point is you want to count forward four. One, two, three, four. Come in right here. Turn it up. Lay it in. And it's going to line up with that hole right there. You see how clear that happened? So what you're going to do is now that you know that this thing is starting to come together, what you want to do it's hit every fourth hole. So here's one, two, three, four. We're gonna come up here again, keep going in from this direction, bring it in, weigh it over, and one, two, three, four. And there it is. At this point, you're not really concerned about these being tight. You don't want them tight. You just want it to be on there a couple of threads. So we'll come in the next hole, lay it in here, put it in the head. Where's our fourth hole, Linda? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, right there. All right, let me get this down there to it. There you go. Now it's not perfectly centered, and it's not gonna be perfectly centered because we just getting it started. So we're gonna go ahead and work on these. our first row. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the top and we, we saw how we were sticking these in. Now all we're going to do is just reverse the methodology. We're going to run this one through here. We're going to turn it up. We're going to lay it down and bam look right there. It goes right to that hole. Now while Linda's working on this I'm going to point out something to you. While you're laying these um, spokes over these other ones they may hit these because remember the hub is not completely centered yet uh, so you just you're not going to bend them but I wouldn't force them too much I would say if you have to force them then you don't have them in the right direction excellent Linda very good this thing should not be forced in here so for example I'll, I'll demonstrate here here's a hole this way this one look here this is not going to go in that hole designed for this way. You're going to have to go in like this, over that one, pull it up, seat it, lay it down, and bam, it's right there. Again, don't tighten these too tight, just get them started, because this thing's going to have to play a little bit. All right, we're going to get the rest of these. Okay. Now, these over here are getting kind of bindy right now because they're they're getting where they need to be at. But again, don't force them. What we're having to do is to pick up on the rim to get it to line up right. So there you go. This side is done. Now, all we're simply going to do is pick this thing up, rotate it, lay it right back down where it was. Uh, I would tell you to try to kind of do that easily to keep from scuffing any of the chrome. You'll see right here that these heads are kind of whoppy jawed. Yep, that's a real word, whoppy jawed. But they're not going to be seated until we get the other side in and get it up on the truant stand. We went ahead um, and spaced it a little higher with the two befores. Now we'll go in on the bottom first, bring it over, and bam. Now we're going to go in with these. Now real quick, tech tip, tech tip. 
Um, these um, twisted spokes, they're not smooth. So if you're going back with these and you feed it into the hole and it feels like the spoke wants to turn a little bit, that's okay. Just let it turn. Bring it where it needs to, get it to where it needs to be at and then lay it back over where it goes. Now, it's, start, it's starting to want to pull up now. And that's okay. You're just going to have to manipulate the rim a little bit. I missed another one. You're just going to have to manipulate the rim a little bit just to get it to do what you want to do. Okay. Well, there you go. Looks better already, doesn't it? Now, we're going to get it up, get it into our truing stand, and then we're going to take it to the next step. So, if you're going to do this for a living, I would strongly urge you to get a truing stand. If you're going to do it often, I would suggest that you get a truing stand. If not, you're going to have to come up with something that is on a level surface, like this table, that's on a level surface like the concrete floor of the garage and something that's going to hold this thing together where it needs to be at level on top of all that. And you need to be able to preload your bearings. I'm going to leave that up to you. That's your homework assignment to determine what bearing preload is. But what we want to do is we want to put this rim into a stand that will most simulate what it's going to be like when it's in those front forks. We want the bearings pressed all the way into the races. We want the spacers up against the bearings and we want all that snug so this thing lines up correctly. What we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the rear swing arm that's still not been put back in Hot Donna we're going to set it up on the table and we're going to get this thing set into it. We got our chrome swing arm set up here. We've used spacers on each side here to make the wheel sit in here correctly. I want to try to show you something and it may not show up on camera. But if you'll notice, some of these are way down lower than the other ones and the other ones are way up in the air. Here's why. If I can do this. If you lean slightly to the left, you can see how the hub is sticking out far on that side. If I come back to the center and lean out the same amount, you can't see you can't see the you can't see the spokes. Gotta go way over here before you see the spokes. So what I'm gonna <coughs> have to do is shift the whole rim this way and I'm gonna ask Linda to do that. Linda step over here I'm gonna hold the hub you grab the rim and slide it this way. Keep going. Alright stop. Now you'll notice all of these are all poking up. Let's see how close we are. Standing in the middle leaning this way we see a little spoke right there back to the center leaning this way see a little spoke right there so we're pretty close so what we're going to do now is basically sit here with these you can see how much threads on each one of them and what we're going to do is we're going to turn them down until we can see about three threads we're not going to do we're not going to do them in order i'm probably going to do this one and then go to the fourth 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 one and then come over here do the fourth one, fourth one, fourth one, all the way around, and then come back to this side and bring these up. And in theory, what that's gonna do is it's naturally gonna pull the hub center this way and this way. So you can see from this example how badly the hub is uncentered on the rim. So we're gonna stop the video right here. Um, there's just too much information that needs to be gotten out there and I don't like long videos. We live in an instantaneous world and people want everything just like that, uh, but they don't have the interest span to sit down and watch a 25 minute video. So we're gonna break it here um, and I'll put a link up here to the next video, part two of it, uh, once we get that uploaded. Um, 
other than that don't forget to check out the Facebook page <clears throat> getting a little from uh, getting some some uh, activity over there a good place to go to ask a question post a question so as YouTube as always thanks for coming by the garage rate comment share we'll see you in part two and ah!